We need to seek forgiveness for wrongs we've done to ourselves and to others and to the world. To mark this time of year, we thought we would read you two stories. The first is called The Porcupines. Summer was coming to a close, and the porcupines got together as a community to celebrate Rosh Hashanah, New Year. They enjoyed the traditional food, round collar or plaited bread, apple slices dipped in honey, pomegranates and dates, intimating and promising the sweetness of the renewed year. They enjoyed wearing their new clothes and the company of the other porcupines and the conversations with them. Yet as they ate, conversed and even danced, they ran into one another and were scrapped and uncomfortable. Finally, slightly bruised and sore, they decided to depart and live separately in the woods. As autumn advanced and young Kippur approached, the weather became colder and they began to miss, they shivered and began to miss the warm embrace of each other, the wonderful foods communally shared, and the rhythm of the dance, and some even died alone. Finally, some isolated porcupines approached each other and said, wouldn't it be better to live together, to accept the occasional scratches and disputes, but to be warm in body and in spirit, and live together in real love? So they joined together again, sought collective atonement for their wrongs, forgave each other and themselves, and lived life together with ups and downs, joys and sorrows, and festivals to celebrate the passing times of the year. The takeaway of this message, which we share with Bishop Tutu, takeaway message to this Rosh Hashanah is that it's better to live together and communally, to be with our flaws, no one is perfect, and to reach out to those that are lonely than to be alone. May the new year bring you sweetness and joy. I'm just going to take you back to the song we just sang, Teach Me Thy Way, O Lord, which has great relevance, as yesterday was Yom Kippur. And one of the books that is read on Yom Kippur is the book of Jonah. This story tells us about a man who resisted God's will, and it was only through going through various trials that he came to a place of acceptance. I'm just going to share a little story from the Haida, which is the Jewish Sunday school, of a little girl and a teacher. Now, the teacher was teaching the little children all about Yom Kippur and the book of Jonah. And afterwards, she asked the children to go away and to do a painting. Well, then they all were very busy at their paintings, but there was one little girl who was so enthusiastic and joyful at her painting that the teacher went over and stood there for a few moments. And then she asked the little girl, wow, what are you painting? And the little girl replied, I'm painting a well. Oh, is Jonah inside the well? No, said the little girl. Jonah couldn't be swallowed by a well. The well's throat is so small it wouldn't be able to hold a human. Oh, said the teacher. And then the little girl said, well, you know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah what actually happened. And then the teacher said, well, what if Jonah went to hell? Well, then you can ask him. <laughs> <laughs> the little takeaway of message here, not only the little girl's humor, but also her openness and curiosity to question but it also takes us back to our song that we just sang, Teach Me Thy Way, O Lord. It takes us back to Jonah, to his calling, that the calling, the purpose of our life, whatever that is, may we find it, and over this coming Yom Kippur, and for the remaining year, may we find that we do God's will. And a traditional greeting for this Yom Kippur, Grama Katama Tuvah, or may you, be sealed in the book of life.